What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to talk about three different Git workflows that people use in production. Also, I'm gonna give you a bonus workflow at the end, which is similar to some other workflows, but yet it's not the same. And we used this workflow in one of the projects that I worked on before and it worked pretty well. So with that said, let's start with the first one. And I would say it's the most popular workflow and it's called Gitflow. The idea is that you have master, develop and feature branches and develop branch is based on master branch and all feature branches are based on develop branch. Basically the flow works like that. You always start from develop branch. It's your default branch. And when you want to build a new feature, you create a new feature branch from develop branch. And when you finish writing your amazing code, you merge feature branch into develop branch. Usually at that moment, people deploy develop branch to staging or a testing environment in order to test features and in order to make sure that everything works as expected. And when it's done, you merge develop branch into master branch and then deploy master branch to production environment. That's basically the idea. There are some other cases that can occur. For example, what if you have a bug on production and you need to fix it quickly? In that scenario, you can't do what I've just described. You can't create a new branch from develop branch, then merge this branch back into develop branch and then quickly merge develop branch into master and deploy master to production. You can't do that because what if you have some other features that you have merged into develop branch, but you didn't finish testing them on staging environment. Basically, you can't merge develop branch right now. Your develop branch is not mergeable. So what you need to do instead is you need to create a new branch from master branch and then merge this branch back into master. Also, you must not forget to merge master branch into develop branch because I'm sure that you want to have this fixed everywhere, not only in master branch. Now let's talk about some disadvantages of Git flow, because if Git flow didn't have any disadvantages, we wouldn't have any other flows. We would be just using Git flow all the time. The first disadvantage is that it slows you down. What I mean by that is that the process of developing and deploying a new feature takes more time than you want it. For example, on one of the projects that I worked on before, we deployed to production very often. We could deploy once a day, we could deploy a couple of times a day. And if we used this flow, it wouldn't work. However, if you don't need to deploy often, then it's fine. And this flow can work well for you. But if you need to deploy often, then I would probably choose another flow. The second disadvantage is that kit flow is a little bit complicated. You have master branch, develop branch, feature branches. You also have hotfixes branches. And usually the default branch is master branch. But in this flow, the default branch is develop branch because all of your feature branches are based on develop branch. So yeah, it's a little bit complicated and it has a learning curve. And if you have a new developer in your team that doesn't have experience with this flow, then expect that it will take some time to figure everything out. But it's not a rocket science, it's not that complicated. Now let's talk about another flow. This flow is simpler than Git flow and it's called GitHub flow. I don't know why it's called GitHub flow, but basically you have master and feature branches and <laughs> that's it. The advantages of GitHub flow is that it's simple and you can deploy to production very often. There is exactly what we needed in one of the projects that I worked on before. And this approach worked great, except for one thing. What if you need to test your feature before deploying it to production. With the previous flow, we had develop branch, and if we needed to test our features, we could deploy develop branch to staging environment. But GitHub flow doesn't have develop branch. You only have master and feature branches. So what we can do here is we can deploy feature branch to staging environment. And when we finish testing our feature, we will merge feature branch into master branch and then deploy master to production. All of this worked on our project. However, there is one downside and it's the fact that we can deploy two features to staging environment at the same time. Because let's say we have feature A and feature B branches. We deploy feature A to staging environment and then we decide that we want to test and deploy feature B as well. Since feature B doesn't have code that feature A has, when we deploy feature B to staging environment, all of the code from feature A will be removed and we won't be able to test both features at the same time. So yeah, that's the biggest downside that we faced when we used this flow on our project. Now, there is another flow that was proposed by GitLab and it's called GitLab flow, surprisingly. And this flow solves the problem that I've just described when you can deploy two features to staging environment. The idea behind GitLab flow is that it has master branch, 
feature branches and also production branch. Feature branches and production branch, all of them are based on master branch. So let's say we have a couple of features that we work on and we wanna test and deploy feature A. So what we need to do here is we need to merge feature A into master branch and then deploy master branch to staging environment. Now let's say we finished working on another feature, feature B, and we wanna test it as well. So what we need to do is we need to merge feature B into master branch and then deploy master to staging again. So now we have two features deployed to staging environment and we can test these features at the same time. And when we decide that we wanna deploy these features to production environment, we merge master branch into production branch and then deploy production branch to production. That's basically the GitLab flow. And honestly, I don't see a difference between GitLab flow and Git flow. The only difference I see is naming. So in Git flow, we have a develop branch, which is basically the same as master branch in GitLab flow. Both of these branches we deploy to staging environment. And in Git flow, we have master branch, which is basically the same as production branch in GitLab flow. Both of these branches we deploy to production environment. Also in Git flow, we merge develop branch into master branch, but in GitLab flow, we merge master branch into production branch absolutely the same things. Maybe another small difference is the way these flows handle fixes on production. For example, in Git flow, when we need to fix a bug on production, we create a hotfix branch and we merge this branch into master and develop branches. In GitLab flow though, we use cherry pick. So what cherry pick means is that when we merge our fix into master branch, instead of merging master into production branch, we cherry pick this fix into production branch. Basically, we only merge this specific fix into production branch and everything else stays in master. Other than that, I don't see any differences. Now let's move on to the last bonus flow that I talked about at the beginning of the video. And as I said, on one of the projects that I worked on before, we used GitHub flow. However, we had a problem with this flow and it's the fact that we weren't able to deploy multiple features to staging environment at the same time. So we switched to another flow and this flow is similar to GitHub flow, but not exactly the same. The difference is that this new flow introduces another branch called staging, or you can call it develop if you prefer. And this staging branch is based on master, same as our feature branches. So here is a key difference. When you finished working on your feature and you wanna deploy it to production, what you need to do is you need to merge your feature branch not only into master, but also into staging branch. You should always merge your branches into master and staging branches. Now, what if we need to test our feature before deploying it to production? In that case, instead of merging our feature branch into both master and staging branches, we only merge our feature branch into staging branch and then we deploy staging branch to staging environment. Then we test our feature on staging and if everything works as expected, we merge this branch into master as well. If you have multiple features, the same thing. We merge feature A and feature B into staging branch, we deploy them, we test them, and if everything is great, we merge feature A and feature B into master. And that's it, that's the flow, that's what we used on our project. This video was quite a long video with a lot of talking, and if you're still watching this video, appreciate it so much. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Dennis, and this channel is all about my same web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing. And if you like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram. Links will be in the description. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.